my pleasure to welcome you to the Clark Howard Show, where our mission is to serve you and empower you so you make better financial decisions in your life. In this episode, I'll tell you what's coming bit by bit, piece by piece, to deal with extreme labor shortages in the fast food segment. And it gives a 24-hour solution and works almost anywhere. So later, Walmart did something that they really deserve credit for. They developed proprietary software that was able to ferret out when elderly people were being scammed into buying gift cards by some con artist threatening that their kid was in jail or something like that. I'm going to tell you what Walmart has done but it's just a drop in the bucket of fraud against the elderly. So let's talk about something fun. I read a story in a New Jersey newspaper called NorthJersey.com. It's actually the website of a newspaper in the uh, Newark area. And it's about a hamburger vending machine that the reviews, CNET did one, and USA Today did one, and this paper did one, that said the burger's really good. And you go up to this vending machine, and it's a robotic machine that makes your burger, cooks it, and serves it fresh. It's not one that has your burger pre-cooked on a warmer or something, or it goes in a microwave after you buy it. Ugh. No, this is like a good juicy burger, according to the people who've tried it, and the burger costs mid-price $6 and change and for a cheeseburger. And the machine, Krista, have you seen the picture of this machine yes. right here? Yep. Um, this kind of thing that takes up very little floor space is going to be a solution for a lot of things. I still remember years and years ago seeing, in first time I ever saw it was in Switzerland, a fully automated convenience store. And now these are very common across Europe where 24 hours a day, every day of the year, you can go to this convenience store and get stuff. But it's a whole different level of, of convenience when Food is available, and I look at the lines traveling in airports virtually every week, the lines of people trying to get food or one of Krista's overpriced Starbucks in an airport or whatever. I mean, the lines just stretch as far as you can see, and a lot of the food concessions are still closed because they can't get staff. So the technology that makes a pizza custom while you wait and you just go to the machine, and uh, I talked about that before, where you go in the robot, you tell it what pizza you want. Now, this is not like going to a family-run-and-own pizzeria where it's made with love. This is a meal, is all it is. The computer does not love you. The robot does not love you, no matter what it says. I remember in the St. Louis airport in Lambert Field, seeing a machine that makes gourmet custom ice cream for you it was too expensive i really wanted to try one but i wouldn't spend the money for the gourmet ice cream but the machine is like going to a cold stone or is marble slab still around going to one of those where they do the mix-ins and all that but it's done by a robotic machine i mean we are going to see more and more solutions with an aging population we have a shortage of young people who fill so many quick serve, fast food kind of jobs. We're going to see more and more of this with the robotics that are going to provide convenience and actually something edible, not a regular vending machine where what are your choices? Cheetos, uh, Twix bar, uh, what else do you get out of those? Pack of gum, whatever. Yeah. I mean, these Trail are. Mix. <laughs> trail mix these are like i mean fresh hot 
or cold food, depending on what you want. And this is a reasonable direction for us to go in a time of severe labor shortage. At CES, I saw all the things happening behind the scenes in restaurants. Consumer electronics show. Yeah, where you see, they don't call it that anymore, but that okay. is what yeah. it is. But anyway, you see the things that will, um, Flippy that actually cooks the hamburgers at a traditional restaurant and all that because of these labor shortages. And I feel bad for people who have not adapted well to all these terminals where you order your food at a lot of quick serve and fast food restaurants where you go to a terminal and you order. I love it that way because it's really easy to get the order exactly right. I love using the food apps on my phone because I'm able to customize my order exactly like I like. I'm able to see whatever deals there are. I'm able to be in the loyalty program of whoever. This is a business that has to figure out and will adapt. Free enterprisers, entrepreneurs adapt to the conditions in the marketplace. That's what you do when you're an entrepreneur. And this idea of the burger robo, the pizza that's robotic, all these different things, they are not the solution, but they're part of the solution to our extreme labor shortages with the shortage of young people. And I expect you to try this out next time you're in that area. I'm in Jersey. Yeah, let's get a report from I'll you. I'll be in Jersey again um, well, later this week. Yeah, yeah. Go for it. Okay, th we'll get to some questions now. This one's from Andrew in Colorado. I heard you discussing how rewards programs are devaluing their point values. Do you think it makes more sense to get a cash rewards credit card and use those savings instead of rewards cards? Okay, this could not be more timely. My wife is looking for a new credit card right now, and we were comparing the value of the cash back card to an airline card that would get her some privileges. And I just kept looking at the value of the airline points and how crummy they are now. And the answer was, she's going cash back. Because the cash back, nobody tells you, oh, well, you can only spend that on Tuesday. And, well, we don't have any flights at a good mileage redemption right now. But if you want to go, uh, let's say, in the middle of winter to who knows where, maybe then we'll give you a seat. I mean, you eliminate all the games, all the shenanigans that the airlines are playing with the mileage devaluation and the hotels as well. Marriott just totally, uh, Marriott is so dominant worldwide in the hotel space with all the brands they own that they've taken Bonvoy and they basically told the value of your points, Bon Voyage. Oh, great. Because, uh, isn't that a good new That's slogan for good. Marriott? Bon Voyage to any value for you. And so getting plain simple cash and we've got a bunch of two percent cards out in the marketplace that's where i'd put my effort by the way if you are a paypal person they have now a card that uh earns three percent but it's complicated i mean you got to be really into the whole paypal thing and be willing to jump through all the hoops to get 3% cash back effectively on your charge purchases. And we do have reviews and lists of cash back cards and other cards at Clark.com. Just FYI, we have a great credit card writer who helps us figure out all that stuff. And this question's from Kevin in Georgia. I'm interested in knowing if this is a legit investment. And he links to a website where you can buy cattle. And he says, I, I called and spoke to their sales department and was happy with what they said, but my concerns include, one, there's no information available on the internet, two, the rate of return is high, 10 to 20% for one year cash investment, and three, the contract is simple, less than one page. If this is legitimate, it would be a great way to earn above market returns, but it feels a little too good to be true. Help me, Clark. Yeah, Kevin, uh, we haven't had this question in a good while about uh, investing in cattle. So this is a very uh, moderate to high risk kind of thing to do with your money. You do stand significant risk of losing money. This is almost like a promissory note where you're promised in return for providing capital 
that you don't own the operation, but you are making cash available to them essentially as a lender with their promise they're going to pay you a high rate of return in a year's time. This is not for the faint of heart. If you want to try something like this, this has to be something that's money that if you lost it, it would not be a big deal because your upside is somewhat limited. Your downside is losing a substantial amount of the money you put in. Know that anytime somebody makes a private offering to you, that the risk level is exponentially higher than with other types of investments. Anytime somebody on a short-term cycle, like a one-year, is promoting a return of 10 to 20% on your money, you got to know that is ultra high risk territory. This is from Daniel in Delaware. Verizon Wireless was trying to get us to sign up for auto pay by providing $10 a month off the bill. You're required to do so on the Verizon website. When we attempted to do this, it required our bank account website username and password. Wait, this wait, wait, is, wait, what? Yes, and I went through and watched the video of doing it. It's similar to Mint, if you've ever gone yeah. to Mint, where it pops up, you choose your bank, and you log into your bank from there to connect to Verizon. Um, and he says, this is way too invasive to our privacy of our personal bank accounts. This use, uses technology to, to scrape all your banking activity, including your transactions and statements for years. I did not give them my website ID and password. Verizon only needs my ABA and checking account number for auto pay. Have you ever heard of other businesses trying to, in, to get into consumers' bank accounts? And is this even legal? So uh, is it legal? Yes. Is it advisable? No. Now, what's really crazy about this is I have an account with Verizon for um, Fios, and with the Fios, all I had to do to get my 10% discount was I had to do the normal ACH. And there's risk involved with providing ACH, but I was able to do it and not have to worry about um you know, forgetting to make the payment or whatever, but what it got me was it got me the 10% discount every, or actually $10 discount is what I got per month with Verizon, same as you're talking about. So did you look in for wireless? There, there was no other choice? Um, they say you can also pay with a debit card or a Verizon card, like a okay. card. Okay, so... Uh, don't do the thing where you're providing your username and password and, and giving the screen scraping technology. You also have the choice of paying with a credit card or debit card, and which they didn't offer me with the Fios. But anyway, um, I don't want you involved in coughing up your username and password. You are right to be suspicious, and there are other methods offered when you go into the system. And they do say you can manually enter it in tiny, tiny type. It, exactly what yeah. I did yeah. with the uh, routing number, bank routing number, and account number. So you've got multiple choices that do not have to involve the screen scrapers being able to spy on every aspect of everything you ever do with money in the past or forward with anybody. And they shouldn't even be trying to get people to do that at Verizon but you can certainly avoid it. Now, that's not a scam what Verizon's doing, but there are a lot of scammers out there trying to get the money of the elderly. And I want to talk about how important it is that you make sure in your family, among your friends, that people that are older know all the key ways that scammers are trying to steal their money and I actually got to tip my hat to Walmart that has helped a lot of elderly people in a weird sort of way avoid getting ripped off. And that's coming up. I and my work in television, I do uh, several TV bits a week for a number of TV stations around the country. And it's so upsetting to me that year after year after year for at least the last 15 years I've had to do one story after another where an elderly person 
has been ripped off by a con artist who gets them to go buy gift cards, typically at a major retailer, and then give the codes off the gift cards to the con artist on the phone with all kinds of made-up stories about, uh, you know, a, a nephew's in the hospital or a grandson's in jail or being held hostage by kidnappers or whatever the story is. And they do it with a sense of urgency because of social media. Now it's even more convincing because the criminals know backstory. They know family members' names and all that because of trolling on social media and seeing what's up. And it's a huge amount of money that's stolen again and again. Well, Walmart uh, developed new software that uses artificial intelligence where they are able to potentially identify when an elderly person is being ripped off by a con artist. So I don't want to give away too much, although although it is published by CNBC. In short, I'll tell you what Walmart's done. They've been able to use AI that when their camera systems, these camera systems Walmart has are like Orwellian, but they're able to identify who's older. They're able to identify who might be buying a large amount of money on a gift card. And the third element is the person is on the phone, on their cell phone, while they're buying them. That Their software has been able to figure out that when those three things are happening at once, that it's almost certain that there is a scamster conning an elderly person. And Walmart has been able to shut down a bunch of the gift card fraud activities happening in their stores. Unfortunately, nobody else is doing this kind of thing in retail. Nobody else either has put an effort into this or has the sophistication. And so Walmart, working with the feds, has been able to uh, intercept these transactions, keep the criminals from using the gift cards. They have turned the money over to the feds. And then step by step, the money is then given back to the elderly person who's being swindled. Now, again, all that criminals will do now that this is becoming known, and it's not my fault, it's already out there in the news, is they're just going to go to CVS, they're going to go to Walgreens, they're going to go to Target, or they're going to go wherever else and try to rip off the elderly person. And I've talked about how the banks and the credit unions have a legal responsibility to have the when an elderly person comes in to withdraw suddenly a great amount of cash, that they're supposed to go through a process of due diligence to make sure that that individual coming in, that elderly person, is supposed to be nosy and f- ask questions to make sure they're not in the midst of being scammed. Uh, it's hit or miss with the banks or credit unions if they're really following through on their responsibilities under the law in this area. And there was no legal requirement for Walmart to do this. As uh, the Department of Justice said, quote, it was impressive what they were able to do, what Walmart was able to do. I mean, it's fantastic. But it's only a drop in the bucket. So what you've got to be about is you have to have uncomfortable conversations with aging friends, relatives, parents, whatever, and just say, hey, by the way, you know, there's all these scams going on right now with people ripping you off by pretending that this or that or the other has happened. And they'll tell you, you can't call the police and you got to do this right now. It always involves a sense of urgency. And I want you to be aware there's a very common scam activity. All that changes 
or whatever the story is they're telling you to create that fear in you that you have to act right away and you can't tell anybody else, can't tell your kids, can't tell the police, whatever. I will tell you that when all that kind of stuff happens, if you're older and you're hearing me right now, I want you to remember this. Tell your friends, let them know that these scams keep happening over these many years because they've worked for the crooks. The only person who can really be their best police officer is yourself. Krista? All right. This question is from Richard in California. Do hard inquiries hurt your FICO score? And why do you keep getting so many offers when you have not inquired about loans for mortgage refis or to consolidate credit cards? How can you remove hard inquiries? So, Richard, first of all, those are not hard inquiries. Those are what are known as soft inquiries, and those don't affect your credit at all. When a lender, bank, credit card company, whatever, is sending you all those solicitations, this is how Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian make their money, is selling customized data on all the Americans they have data on, which is most of us, to lenders and institutions looking for more business. And so when they do, when a bank says, okay, we're looking for everybody who's blah, 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 in this age range, who lives in this kind of community, uh, we want them all, and we'll buy that data from you because our experience is people who fit those multiple criteria are much more likely to respond to our offer. And so the credit bureau will do that, provide that to them, and you get those solicitations. By the way, you generally will not get those solicitations if your credit is frozen. And it's another advantage of credit freeze. Those don't hurt you at all. What's a hard inquiry? You are literally yourself applying for credit. You decide with one of the major credit card issuers to apply for a new credit card or with a credit union or bank, you apply for a home equity line of credit. Anything where you're applying for credit actively, that's what generates a hard inquiry. Now the good news, hard inquiries make up a very small percent of what makes up your overall credit score and standing. And the hit to your credit is relatively small when you've applied for a new credit card, line of credit, something like that. The Really, there's only two things that ultimately move the needle on your credit. One, paying your bills on time each and every month is approximately 35% of what makes up your credit score. And then how much of the credit you have you're using at a time, that makes up 30% of your available credit, uh, your, your credit score. It's known as your available credit ratio. You never want to use more than 30% of the credit available to you. And if you want to hyper boost your credit score, you want to use less than 10% of the available credit you have. This is from Justin in Oregon. And actually, I had a question, similar question from a lady named Gina, who's starting her own business. Um, she's opening a hair salon. Justin says, does Clark have any advice for starting a small business? My wife and I recently started a small Christmas tree farm on part of the land we bought with our house. We're both new to having a business and would appreciate any advice or tips you guys have to offer. OK, number one thing, if you're just starting a business, is a lot of people when they're starting a business only worry about getting to day zero. You know, do we have enough money to sign this, pay this deposit, whatever. You cannot securely open a business when you are out of funds, when you've exhausted your available funds on the day your doors open or virtually open depending on what kind of business. You have to plan that you will have a period of time after you open your business, typically four to 18 months, where you will be cash flow negative over that initial period. So you have to have money to get the business open, and then you have to have the money for dealing with shortfalls as you build up loyalty and get enough business. And, and 
that the reason that range of months is so long with a business that becomes successful is different businesses have higher or lower levels of overhead and that controls how long it takes to overcome what's known as your fixed costs versus your variable costs in the business but I am a, what's referred to as a serial entrepreneur, not Frosted Flakes, someone who's opened <laughs> multiple businesses over my adult life. And I love the entrepreneurial thing. I love the entrepreneurial spirit. I love putting things at risk for creating the potential for reward and being able to provide a product or service that people actually want, you hope, in the marketplace. So there are resources from like-minded people that help you. I've mentioned in the past SCORE, the Service Corps of Retired Executives, where you are provided advice for free or very low cost, nonprofit organization, on starting a business and dealing with hiccups with the business. And there are SCORE chapters all over America, again, SCORE.org. And then in a lot of states near you, there may be a small business development center, which often will be uh, based uh, cooperatively with a state college or university or adjacent to a state college or university where they offer uh, the potential sometimes for low cost rent for a business and also assistance with advice on how to get your business going or to improve a business that maybe is stumbling. And so having essentially mentorship for your business is a great thing to do. But if you're still at the idea stage, I know a lot of people poo-poo business plans. I think a business plan is really, really helpful where you set out your goals, what's going to be involved in getting started. And you'll look back later when you've written a really thought out business plan and you look back a year or two later and you're like, Hey, it didn't go like that at all. But just going through the mental exercise of thinking through the business plan for your business helps you avoid a lot of errors. And I want to talk about anybody buying a franchise. And you're thinking of buying a franchise-based business, always go work under the radar with a location of that franchise so you can see what it's really like down below, not up uh, up top. And you do that for my window I like is six months. You'll learn so much on somebody else's dime about how to run that business versus your own dime. And then a quick small tip I do have too. Um, Gina, for example, with her hair salon has a space but didn't know how to start to furnish it. I've seen so many businesses, unfortunately, that close locations that are selling um, all sorts of office furniture and um, and salons too, selling equipment on, you can go to Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. So, uh, You know, I completely neglected to mention, you just made me think of uh, restaurants. There are a lot of restaurants that sadly did not make it through COVID. They abandoned their um, kitchens, a lot of their uh, equipment, furniture. There's a real opportunity for you with a business, uh, particularly a restaurant, because of how many spaces there are that you're not going to have to do build out. You may have to do a little reno, but not build out. And all the really, really expensive back of the house stuff you'd have to buy may already be sitting there. And you negotiate that as part of your lease that you can use that stuff with the potential landlord. Well, I want to thank you for being with us today. And I hope the rest of your day is absolutely fantastic.